We need church. And you know, as Christians, we have an opportunity to shine in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. And when you go to church and you fellowship with the people of God, you're reminded of the fact that there is a remnant out there who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Sounds like they're in a cult. Welcome back, everyone, to Bridge the Divide, where I examine irrational beliefs, the irrational behaviors that often follow, and how we, with education, rationality, and reason, can bridge the societal divides that they create. Today, we're going to take a look at a video from Ben the Baptist, in which he makes the studiously researched and totally professional claim that atheists are just stupid hypocrites. You're hypocrites! All of you! Now, as far as theist claims about atheists go, it's certainly one of the more ignorant and juvenile ones. But seeing as how Ben is a proud member of the new IFB-associated Steadfast Baptist Church down in Texas, a church which routinely hosts the internationally banned hate preacher and alleged child abuser Stephen Anderson, and the pastor of which is the infamous hate preacher Jonathan Shelley, with whom Ben co-hosts a weekly podcast with, it's pretty easy to see exactly why Ben feels he's justified in making this claim. Given that the new IFB is well known for being staunchly anti-intellectualism, their various representatives of hate rapidly rejecting things like evidence-backed predictive models and logical fallacies and entailments. Ben himself is also a somewhat controversial individual as he once had his channel banned from YouTube for persistent violations of their terms of service, an event he inevitably went on to attribute to YouTube supporting Christian persecution. Wow, color me so surprised. Which is precisely why you can now find the bulk of his content over on Rumble. Fortunately for me, unlike the previous times when I I've covered new IFB hate preachers like Anderson, Shelley, and Bruce Mejia, and YouTube swiftly yellow carded those response videos due to the extremity of the hate filled messages they were spreading. This particular video I'm responding to today doesn't cross any of those lines, so we'll be able to see it in its entirety. So let's dive in and see if Ben here actually understands what it is he's talking about, and if he actually has justification for asserting that atheists are just stupid hypocrites. The floor is yours, Benny boy. How's it going, everyone? I was kind of thinking about the hypocrisy of atheists. It vexes me. I'm terribly vexed. Now, to be completely honest, that is a kind of weird thing to be concerned about, especially when it comes to people who hold a non-theistic worldview. The term hypocrisy describes when an individual advocates for a particular belief or a behavior that they themselves do not hold or practice. And when it comes to the position of being an atheist, that position refers only to the fact that the individual does not believe in the existence of a god or gods. That term, atheist, doesn't stretch to apply to anything else. So when someone asserts that an atheist is being a hypocrite because they're an atheist, that's a pretty weird claim. Because it implies that there exists a behavior that one could only engage in if one believes that a god exists. So yeah, Ben, please feel free to explain what behavior you think atheists are advocating for or engaging in that demonstrates that they aren't actually atheists. <laughs> because for some reason, on my X feed... I think it's pretty safe to say that taking anything you got off X seriously was your first mistake. Every once in a while, some God-hating atheist freak will pop up. Not even 20 seconds in and you're already poisoning the well. Atheists do not hate God because that would imply that they believe it existed to be hated. We may hate the antisocial behaviors that the concept inspires in some people. We may hate the us first them mentality such ideologies possess and propagate. But we do not hate any conceptualization of a God. Seriously, Ben, if your standard is to misrepresent or gaslight atheists in order to make your own position look more consistent, then this is not going to turn out well for you. One of their posts will pop up on my feed, even though, you know, I obviously don't want to see that. Honestly, Ben, if you're that terrified by just the notion of people pointing out the logical fallacies in your worldview, then just block them. You whinging about it on your channel just makes you look petty. But um, whenever I do see their content, it just demonstrates to me that uh, they clearly don't really believe the garbage that they spew. And here's what I mean by that. Sweet, let's get into the evidence of how sending atheist memes over a social media platform indicates that the purported atheist who is sending them actually believes in a god. Atheism rejects 
the concept of an objective standard of morality because they kind of have to in order to logically hold to their worldview. While I didn't expect the first line out of your mouth to be a lie, I can honestly say I wasn't surprised. The whole misrepresenting your opponent's position so that you don't actually have to address their argument is old hat for theists. Atheism itself, or non-theism if you're talking about a worldview, does not entail any specific moral position on anything. There are atheists who are moral realists, just as there are theists who are moral relativists. I myself am a moral relativist, and I can tell you that it has absolutely nothing to do with me being an atheist. My position of moral relativism is grounded in the observed fact that morality, those principles that are concerned with the distinction between what is subjectively determined to be right and wrong, is itself biologically grounded in our evolved capacity for empathy, the ability to internalize the emotional experiences of other people. Thus, morality, the ability to make those distinctions, is subjective to the individual, and the subjective moral frameworks that are elicited from that subjective morality are agreed upon by the collective, based upon the goals that that collective wants the society to accomplish. It's also important to note that if the god that Ben thinks exists actually existed to dictate to humans what was right and wrong, those distinctions would still be entirely subjective, meaning mind-dependent to the god, and arbitrarily imposed. Because by the very lights of the Christian worldview, nothing exists external of the god to act as a reference point to determine which of any logically possible moral framework must necessarily be imposed. What they believe is that morality is just a matter of opinion. No, we actually don't. And that would be the second misrepresentation you've made. Moral distinctions are informed by a variety of factors. An individual's capacity for empathy, the influence of one's parents and peers during their formative years, and one's own personal day-to-day -day experiences. What this tells us is that when a person is making a moral distinction at any given moment, that the process is far more nuanced and complex than simply holding an opinion. These are moment-to-moment -moment inclinations and intuitions that have biological grounding, deep psychological influences, and are constantly evolving in the wake of new experiences. Also, it's important to remember that while morality is entirely subjective, moral determinations can be objectively true insofar as their relationship to the goals set by the individual or the society. Just like how the rules of chess are subjectively determined, meaning that there is no mind-independent concrete source for the rules of chess, but are themselves objective if the goal of the players is specifically to win a game of chess. If the subjective goal of a society is to equally increase individual and collective well-being, then the moral determination that those behaviors that reduce well-being should be outlawed or at minimum disincentivized becomes an objective truth insofar as the accomplishment of that subjective goal. It's all subjective. I don't think he likes that. Now think about this. So that would mean that murdering people is not objectively wrong. It's just a matter of opinion. Again, that's incorrect, but I've already explained how. There is nothing that indicates that murder being wrong is a universal mind-independent standard. Even the notion of the possibility that a killing of another human being could be unjustified is not a universal standard in humans. In fact, the evidence shows that those moral distinctions rarely, if ever, apply to those outside of an individual's immediate circle. We, as a collective society, have come together and agreed that the unjustified killing of another human being is immoral and thus unlawful lawful. And we do this because we have collectively agreed that we want to live in a society where such behavior is minimized, if not eliminated entirely, as doing so yields an improvement in the sense of societal safety and thus increases the well-being of individuals and the collective society. So again, it's not just an opinion. It's subjective. You already said that. Subjectively wrong. Stones You're repeating yourself, you know that? Uh, this is stupid and psychotic. You see, now you calling the position of moral relativism stupid, that is an example of an opinion. And it's obviously a ridiculous one, given that the moral framework of something like Christianity leads to some individuals agreeing to do things like murder children if they honestly believe that their God commanded them to do so. Yeah, so like if God beamed into your skull, like the thought, and you knew undeniably that it was God, and he said, go to that playground and ice pick the baby in the skull. Just like poke his eyeballs out with the ice pick. Are you going to do it? Well, yeah. I mean, if it was directly from <laughs> yeah, him okay. and I knew it was from him without a doubt. Oh, man. And the term psychotic doesn't really work here, Ben, because that term is a clinical diagnosis, which refers to a collection of symptoms that affect the mind, such as hallucinations, delusions, 
disorganized thoughts, speech, and actions, aphasia, lack of motivation, reduced or disorganized empathetic response, reduced impulse control, and reduced affect display. So no, moral relativism itself, which by the way is a metaphysical position, is not psychotic and is not a symptom of psychosis. Okay, think about this. So you're telling me that morality is nothing more than an opinion. That's like the fourth time you've said that. Do you happen to have anything substantive? Anything you can demonstrate exists mind independently that you can appeal to for whatever argument you think you have? No, I don't at all. No. Well, how about the fact that everyone has an opinion? There's lots of different opinions out there. How do you validate one over the other if it's all just subjective? Okay, while that isn't an argument against moral relativism, that is an important question when it comes to establishing the subjective moral frameworks that we want to impose upon the society that we want to live in. What this entails is for each individual of the collective to first appeal to their internal subjective moral intuitions, then the collected members come to a consensus as to where those individual moral frameworks overlap, and from there they establish what they've subjectively determined to be the best moral framework to impose upon the society that reflects and represents all of the people that will be living within it. In ancient times, when human beings lived in nomadic tribes that numbered in the dozens or maybe even the hundreds, this was a far easier task, as there were fewer voices to hear from and it was much easier to figure out what everyone wanted. But today, say in a nation like America, where we have a population of 333 million people, that's far more daunting. So we go through this process by electing officials that we feel will best represent us, by working to a establish or overturn laws that we feel do or do not correspond with our subjective moral intuitions. Needless to say, it is a much more difficult and time-consuming effort these days. And what's even harder than that is finding that moral through-line from every individual on the planet, all 8 billion of them, through every group, city, county, state, and nation that equally represents everybody. Man decisions are so hard. But just because it's more difficult doesn't make it impossible. And it certainly isn't a defeater for moral relativism. And if your only rebuttal, Ben, is that you personally don't like what moral relativism entails, or that you think it's simply too arduous a task to employ globally with any degree of real equality, then that's just an appeal to consequence fallacy. And here's why, well, one of many reasons, I should say, these people are hypocrites. Finally, let's get to the behavior that you think it is logically impossible to engage in without first believing that a god exists. Because of the fact that if morality truly is nothing more than a matter of opinion, why do they get so angry about people holding moral positions they don't like? Where the hell have you been? Hearing you ask that question, I have to wonder if you've been living under a rock somewhere in the Mojave Desert since 2016. So I'll start by saying this. Non-believers do not care what flavor of Christianity you are, or even that you're Christian, or even that you believe in a god. What you happen to personally believe is of no consequence and has no bearing on any of us. It is, however, some of the behaviors you choose to engage in because you believe they're justified by holding those beliefs that we have an issue with. When large swaths of Christians attempt to violate the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment by forcing the Ten Commandments into public schools, or trying to force taxpayers to pay for Bibles to be placed in public schools, or allowing religious-based private schools access to federal funding, or eliminating a woman's access to abortion just because your particular group doesn't like it, or the elimination of equality protections for the LGBTQ community, or the attempted opposition of evidence-based education in favor of whatever your faith position is. We naturally get angry because you are ostensibly trying to force everyone else around you to live under the tenets of your ideology by altering or eliminating entirely the foundational secular principles that this country was built on. Per the First Amendment, you are absolutely free to follow or not follow any religion you want. But the moment you try to use that religion that you've subjectively decided to follow to justify dictating how other people live their lives, and then you go one step further by making a concentrated legal effort to redefine this nation from the democracy that represents everyone it is to a theocracy that represents you and yours. The line must be drawn here. 
this far, no farther. I also have to point out how somewhat shocking it is that all of this seems to be coming as a surprise to you because you and your ilk would be just as up in arms at times as we are if there was a concentrated effort by Muslims to influence law in order to push this country towards an Islamic state. It's all just opinion. You're still just repeating yourself. You can say it a hundred thousand more times, Ben. That you personally don't like it is not a defeater. If there's no true right answer... Ah, but there is. The right answer is entailed by what kind of a society we all want to live in. And it's all subjective. Then you have no justification to condemn someone else for holding to an opposite moral position from the one that you believe in when it's all subjective anyway. We do if that moral position infringes upon the tenets or goals of the society that we have established. It's not a statement that either position is objectively more or less moral than the other. It's just a statement that one is better than the other because one of the options impedes the attainment of the goals that are subjectively agreed upon by the society. If we collectively want to live in a society that provides equal legal protections for every person living within it, and then you come along and attempt to pass legislation that either reduces or eliminates those legal protections, especially for a group that you personally don't like, that would pose an infringement or an impediment to the goals of the society and there would be objective cause to reject it. Now, if it just so happens to be that you don't personally like that the society you live in doesn't reflect your personal standards at every turn, feel free to leave, find some deserted patch of land, and start your own. The door swings both ways. But until then, we will do whatever we can to protect this secular nation from the legal implementation of any moral distinctions that reduce or impede the collective goals of the society. So this is the situation. They affirm with their mouth that morality is based on nothing more than human opinion. Yes, many non-believers, though not all, do hold the position that morality is relative. But then they act as if it's actually based on an objective standard. And it is, that standard being the society in which we live. As I said before, while these distinctions are subjective, they are objective as they relate to the accomplishment of a particular goal. So no, it's not hypocrisy. You simply don't understand the full contextual implications of the term objective. They act in a completely different way. Nope, they act in a way that is logically consistent. Your ignorance is not an excuse. And it just goes to show you how untenable and uh, just self-defeating. So again, I think you're using terms that you don't really understand the meanings of. Well, he don't know talking good like me and you. Untenable means that a thing cannot be defended. And you using it in this specific context would imply that moral relativism is illogical or unsound, which I've already demonstrated it isn't because it poses no logical contradiction. We also have direct empirical evidence and predictive modeling that supports the position of moral relativism. And the best thing about those predictive models is that everything contained within them we can demonstrate that we have access to. And as far as your second term, self-defeating, that implies that the inherent qualities of a thing impede it from achieving the ends it's meant to bring about. Firstly, moral relativism is just a conclusion about reality based on the evidence. Thus, it doesn't have any particular goals attached to it, so it can't be self-defeating. Secondly, I've already walked through how societies do in fact succeed by employing moral frameworks that are derived from consensus. Honestly, Ben, if you spent half as much time educating yourself on these topics instead of looking up buzzwords to inflame your audience, you might actually one day have something substantive to say. It's probably also the reason why you've repeated yourself in this video more times than 50 Cent was shot. Their logic is. Totally sound. Because if morality truly is a matter of opinion, a matter of opinion, then they wouldn't get so mad about Christians believing what we believe. Once again, it's not because you believe what you believe. If you want to continue believing in stupid things and rejecting all the evidence that refutes you, that's on you. We do not care, but we do care when you and others like you attempt to infringe on our lives. Your actions impact others, and if you are incapable of recognizing that very simple fact, you should probably seek out a professional to discuss getting a handle on your narcissism. And also, 
they wouldn't constantly try to attack God's character? Well, that is an entirely different conversation. Generally, attacks against the character of the Christian God are reserved for conversations where the Christian is espousing that their moral framework is the most superior. And when the rules for slavery and the advocation for things like genocide, incest, and baby killing are contained within your holy book, and there are Christians out there conceding that they would literally commit wholesale atrocities if they believed their God commanded them to, don't be surprised when you get called out for your irrationality. Because, again, if it's nothing more than subjective... You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Anyway, you do not have justification to go after somebody else for holding to a subjective point of view. We do when it comes to the form of the society that we want to live in, and when your atypical morality borders on psychopathy. But of course, I don't believe they actually think that. Deep down inside, they know there's an objective moral standard out there. No, you don't know that. One, because no such thing exists. And two, because you don't have special psychic access to the minds of other people, even if your particular ancient book says you do. The minute you start claiming that you have special access to and know the mental states of other people, you've completely lost the plot and are just being an obtuse asshole. No wonder people are calling you out on social media. They know they violate it every single day. I may violate your subjective nonsense, but that's okay because your subjective nonsense doesn't apply to me. They know that they're wrong. No, I've demonstrated quite accurately why I'm correct. And I did so with evidence. Feel free to demonstrate that your God exists as something other than an abstract concept in your mind, and then you might actually have a leg to stand on. And I just think they're stupid hypocrites. So in reality, your entire thesis here is that moral relativism is stupid because you don't like it. I think it goes without saying, I think it goes without saying that your fifis are not a logical defeater. Now to bridge the divide here, it is important to recognize what is and is not logically entailed by a person's position. When you're armed with that information, you'll be less likely to commit a straw man fallacy and you can actually have a productive conversation. It's also important to recognize that if you're going to make the claim that your subjective position is objectively better than someone else's, then it actually goes a really long way to bring evidence that supports your claim. Because your personal feelings on the matter are completely irrelevant. And given given that Christian moral frameworks inherently propagate an us-versus-them mentality, while secular humanist moral frameworks do not, it's fairly obvious, at least at an ideological level, which position is more moral, and exactly why fighting against the implementation of such a system upon our nation should be our highest priority. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. And be sure to leave a comment below. I love reading your responses, and those interactions help with the dreaded algorithm. Don't forget, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. A link to where you can support these important efforts is down in the description. And if you like what I do here and would like to support me further, everything you need to become a channel member or nab yourself some official Bridge the Divide gear is also in the description. Once again, thank you all so much for your continued support. And as always, be safe, be excellent to each other. And together, we can Bridge the Divide.